Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we'll discuss some Arduino projects for beginners. So, let's get started. Number 13. A capacitive touch sensor uses arrays of tiny capacitor circuits to collect data. To interface a capacitive fingerprint sensor with an Arduino, collect the power, ground, and data pins in the following manner. This sensor allows you to store up to 200 fingerprints. When the finger is placed over the sensor, the data on the serial monitor tells whether the fingerprint's registered or not. Number 12. In order to build an RFID door lock mechanism, the RFID sensor is connected to the Arduino using the SPI interface. The green LED flashes to show that a tag's been read and access has been granted, while the red LED flashes to indicate that a tag's been read and access has not been granted. A micro server motor opens and closes the locking mechanism. Number 11. If you want to make a GPS based speedometer, then you need to connect the transmitter and receiver pin of the GPS module to D2 and D3 of the Arduino. A 3.3 volt backup logic is provided to the GPS module to keep the module active at all times. The OLED display is connected via I2C pins. Here, the circuit's placed inside a moving vehicle, and it displays the speed in kilometers per hour. Number 10. To interface a transparent OLED with Arduino, connect the display to its converter and insert it on a breadboard. The converter is connected to the Arduino using SPI communication. An RTC module is used to get the time and temperature data. After connecting all these components using this circuit diagram, the time and temperature are read from the RTC functions and displayed on the OLED display. Number 9. Using a trackpad, you can control a digital servo motor with the slide of your finger. Here, a total of six digital pins are used, two for the motor driver, two for the encoder, and two for the touchpad. The motor speed and direction change depending on the trackpad's touch intensity. By tapping the trackpad, the motor returns to its initial position. Number 8. To display a GIF animation on a black and white OLED display, you first need to extract all the frames of the GIF animation. From there, all the frames are converted to black and white and stored in a folder. These images are now converted to a compiler-friendly format. To optimize and simplify the data, you could create a pointer array. Now using a simple function, any animation can be played on the OLED. Altium is a PCB design software that's both powerful and easy to use. With its intuitive interface and comprehensive set of features, Altium Designer makes it easy to create high-quality PCB designs. And with all new Altium 365, now you can share your PCB designs with anyone from anywhere with a single click. With Octopart, you can get real-time component insights as you design your PCB in Altium. Check the description for more details. Number 7. Take a breadboard and insert the push buttons and LEDs on the breadboard. Create a voltage divider circuit using resistors by connecting them in the following manner. Now, depending on which of the push buttons pressed, an LED glows. Each button's been assigned a limit. The code checks the value of the pressed push button and turns on the corresponding LED. In this way, you could connect multiple push buttons to a single Arduino input. Number 6. To make a turbidity meter using an Arduino, you'll need a turbidity module and its amplifier. Connect the OLED display, an RGB LED, and the sensor using the following circuit diagram. When the sensor is dipped in pure water, it gives a low value and lights up a green LED. But when the sensor is placed in dirty water, it gives a high turbidity value and lights up a red LED. Number 5. To make an AM or FM radio, this module is connected to Arduino along with some capacitors and an audio jack. On starting the PC application and selecting the communication method, the radio starts working on the predefined frequency range. The graphical representation shows the quality of the received signal. The spectral scan allows you to scan the entire FM area, and the station list application shows the current radio station. Number 4. To make a liquid level sensor, you'll need an old ribbon cable and cut it according to the container length. By insulating its one end, it acts as a capacitor whose capacitance value can be measured with Arduino. The capacitor library allows you to measure capacitance with no external hardware. It just requires one digital pin and one analog pin. With the help of this software, the liquid level in the container can be displayed in a graphical form. Number 3. In order to control a high current circuit using a low current input, you'll require this relay module. Connect the power and ground pins of the relay to Arduino while the signal pins connected to pin 7 of Arduino. Using the digital write and delay function, 
The relays turned on for one second and then turned off for the next second. Number 2. Arduino can be used for measuring voltage and current using analog pins. The analog pin of Arduino measures the voltage up to 5 volts and gives a value between 0 and 1024. To measure a voltage greater than 5 volts, a voltage divider circuit is required. In this case, using a 100K ohm resistor and a 50K ohm resistor, you can measure voltage up to 15 volts. To measure current, an external module is needed. The voltage, current, and power are displayed on an OLED. Number 1. To use a 7-segment display with Arduino, connect the display to the digital pins 2 and 3 of Arduino. To display temperature and humidity data, connect the data pin to the digital pin 5 of the Arduino. The temperature is displayed in degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. If you want to display the date and time, connect the RTC module to the I2C pin of Arduino. So, these were some interesting projects for beginners using Arduino. Comment down below the one you liked the most. Drop a like and subscribe to our channel to keep supporting us. Goodbye!